Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, to join this presentation. The pre presentation will be made by our three. Uh, this is Xinhui from VMware. I'm a core developer of Sunlin project. And this is Qi Ming, come from IBM, and the PTL of Sunlin. And this is Peter, come from Nokia. He's a core developer of the Nokia. And uh, there is a photo over there. Actually, uh, he is the Renat of the PTL of the Mistral. Uh, he cannot come this time, but uh, he contributed a lot to this presentation and this integration too. So we appreciate him uh, also. Now we can start. Uh, actually, high availability is a very complicated problem to resolve. Uh, by this graph, actually, we show four types of the high availability in OpenStack deployment uh, cloud. Uh, where, you know, in an OpenStack cloud, OpenStack is supposed to manage a group of hosts. And uh, uh, on the hosts, OpenStack can create and, uh, you know, do the lifecycle management about the VMs and the containers, all these things. And in the container and the VMs, application running. So the four type of availability can involve uh, you know, different kind of uh, factors, such as for the host, we need to consider the uh, availability of the physical hardware and the operating system, of course, and the network storage, all these things. For the VM layer, we need to also take care of the resource availability, such as network storage and the mobility, that means the migration and the, do the across room placement, something like this. And for the application layer, actually, we need to take care of the service resilience. Uh, I'm sure they were already very, you know, uh, it's popular topics into the different scope, such as we need to uh, consider the quality of the service and uh, the cost, the transparency, and uh, the data integrity when we do the service re uh, resilience. And for the OpenStack itself, of course, there are many things we need to do the reliability. To help this uh, scope or resolve uh, the auto-healing problem, Certainly, in the past cycles already do a lot of work to provide a framework to help the uh, you know, failure detection and the report and the recover this loop. Uh, by this graph, actually, uh, we show the auto-healing uh, loop provided by Sunlin. As a clustering service, Sunlin can help to create uh, a group of same type of objects, such as the VM, we call it as a cluster. And the cluster can, uh, can use a standby mode to do the you know, uh, availability by providing some redundancy. And after crea creation of a cluster, we can attach, create and attach some policy to control the placement. That means when, when, when I scale out a cluster or create a new node in the cluster, I can use placement policy to, uh, to define where the new node can be placed. And the, more importantly, we can provide the healthcare uh, policy. That means we can use a policy to uh, mention what kind of detection uh, the user want for the target cluster, and what kind of recovery action they want to use when never you know anything happens, they want to do the recover. Here we, uh, for the step two, actually we provide different kind of detection way. The first one is polling. That means after you know if some cluster registered towards the Selenium engine, we can uh, we can polling to know the status of the different node of a cluster. And we also can monitor and listening the events happened to the targeted VM and maybe applications running inside. That depends on what kind of events the application can emit or uh, fail. And then we can use a accelerometer and the A to uh, you know, send out the alert to the receiver of the Sunlin. Receiver is a very important abstract provided by Sunlin. In this way, we can you know, consist of uh, a complete loop to do the detection and the recover things. 
and we already uh, do you know in the past cycles finish all the framework. But here today we trying to deliver uh, some extension we made in the pack in the past pack cycle. We want to uh, you know bring this framework into a industry solution from two perspectives. The first one is uh, we trying to use some enterprise level monitoring to improve the uh, you know the detection side. That means we can we should use some reliable and scalable monitoring to you know generate the alert and uh, to know what you know whenever the failure happens. And more importantly, we need to make the monitor um, should be powerful to collect the different data across the different sources. That's very important. So uh, not only Silometer and A, we need to integrate with some enterprise monitor. The other perspective we're trying to extend the framework is the integration with some workflow uh, toolkits. Here, Mistral is our choice. Because actually, whenever the recovery happens, actually the action is very important. Maybe sometimes or often, the, the, the action uh, can be the long run. That means we need to care about the steps and uh, the status of each step. And then uh, at the same time, actually, we need to handle the uh, parallelism and uh, the error handling. All these things, we need to consider them uh, in a whole way. So that's the reason why we choose to uh, inter uh, integration with the VR ops. That's uh, just a sample, uh, just an example of the enterprise monitor and uh, use Mistral, very powerful project. We collaborate together with Sunny together to uh, provide an industry solution. In the rest of the presentation, we will uh, introduce what Sunlin is and uh, what's, what's the advantage of the Mistral. And then we can present the VROPS part and give a quick demo. Now I would like to uh, introduce Timing for the Sunlin deep dive. Thank you. Uh, OK. Um, uh, just a little bit uh, quick introduction of the Sunlin project. Uh, the Sunlin project was started uh, about two years ago, uh, the aim, the goal is building um, a collection service for OpenStack, a very generic service that can help you manage uh, homogeneous objects on OpenStack. For example, Nova servers, for example, heat stacks. And later on, we also extended the sending to manage uh, Docker containers. So uh, on this page, I'm showing you the uh, high-level architecture of the sending service. As you can see, from the client side, we have a command line interface uh, implemented as OpenStack client plugin. And we have um, a dashboard implemented as um, um, Horizon plugin. And we also have Python and uh, Java uh, language bindings for, for you to interact with the sending service. And we support multiple engine deployment so that um, if you are managing large scale clusters, uh, multiple engine can help you um, uh, ensure that the scalability is, is uh, achieved. Um, sending talks to the other OpenStack services through <laughs> one project, one service that is, that is the OpenStack SDK. Uh, we are not relying on any blah, 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 client, for example, Nova client or heat client. We, we, we just rely on one uh, service, and that's the OpenStack SDK. We talk to any other OpenStack service, including Key Keystone. Um, we talk to Nova to manage VM servers in collect, um, collectively, and we talk to Heat to manage um, a combination of everything else. Um, as I just mentioned, we, we also support Docker uh, containers today uh, is um, in experimental status. We are still improving that. Uh, to make the service even uh, smarter, we also uh, uh, develop a lot of policies that you can attach to a cluster and detach from cluster. Uh, examples including the scaling policy that helps you determine how do you want to scale out, scale in your cluster when something uh, happens, some events are usually received? 
And we also uh, have uh, um, experimental status uh, health policy. We are, we are trying, uh, still improving that. Uh, that can help you auto heal any node that, that has failed. We have deletion policies helping, helping you to decide which node you want to remove from a cluster when you uh, detect that something bad happened. We also have affinity policy and other placement policy uh, that help you decide where you want your new node to, to be placed, in a new availability zone, in a new region, or anti-affinity, all those kind of things. We also wrap uh, load balancing, uh, the load balancer service uh, as a policy. So uh, we, uh, we believe that users are more um, interested in the policy implemented instead of the service itself. So that's the current status. Um, sending uh, provides a lot of primitives, a lot of operations for you to operate your, your, your cluster. Um, that's a collection of things um, together. Uh, we provide a basic management of your cluster membership. For example, you add a node into a cluster, remove a node from a cluster, you scale it out, scale it in, you resize it. Um, there are a lot of uh, command line op options for you to specify. Um, most of the time, um, uh, these operations are, are already, already sufficient for you to do daily uh, <coughs> cluster management things. And we also have uh, policy management uh, support uh, to support um, use, use scenarios such as auto-scaling, auto-heating, and placement and load balancing I just mentioned. Um, there are some other use cases we are exploring, for example, the standby active cluster deployment so that you can do um, a rolling upgrade much more easier. Uh, also on this page is the command you, you will use to create a cluster. Uh, when you are creating a cluster, you specify uh, the desired capacity, the minimum size, the maximum size, and the profile. Uh, you want to use. The profile here is uh, actually anything that can be abstracted. Today we have implemented a profile for Nova Server, heat stack, and uh, uh, Docker container. Actually, you can add your own profile. Uh, we have extension point for that. If you want to use send it to manage uh, an array of integers, you can do that. Um, there are many diff uh, different ways to use sending. I just mentioned that we have a command line interface and the Horizon plugin uh, for you to interact with the service. Um, uh, when you are writing some policies, um, there are two ways actually. At least you can use the sending uh, uh, command line or web interface directly. Um, that's, uh, you, are, you will be writing a YAML file. Uh, on this page, I'm showing an example that's uh, affinity policy uh, that you to specify whether uh, you want uh, your uh, server group to honor uh, an anti-affinity um, uh, affinity uh, policy. Uh, this is the standalone policy uh, uh, specification you can use to manage your, your, your cluster. And uh, another way is that uh, we have fully integrated uh, sending resources into HEAT. Uh, the the right-hand side is a, a, a snip of a HEAT template file. You can specify uh, um, sending policies as a resource uh, in HEAT template. So uh, next, I will invite uh, our friend and um, Michelle expert to introduce you um, how Mistral fits into the whole picture. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Um, as mentioned, I, I'm jumping in in place of Renat, and I will talk about why would you like to use Mistral in place of your own um, script solution or just using some simple Nova or Heat actions for recovery. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mistral, it provides a robust uh, DSL language, it's formalized, and you have all the common building blocks that would that would be available for you uh, otherwise in your script. Uh, you can use uh, your own uh, structures that you create by reusing workflows. 
Um, and, and if you're still uh, missing something from Mistral, from the built-in actions, you can just create your own plugin uh, written in Python and add it to the Mistral library. Um, Mistral is an OpenStack project. It's, uh, it's very deeply integrated with OpenStack, uh, which means that it has uh, resources for all the, all, and, and actions for most of the uh, other OpenStack projects, uh, which is basically opens the door for Sandlin to be able to interact with many OpenStack APIs. Uh, it also handles uh, authentication to Keystone. Uh, if you're using the V3 API, that means that you can use trusts, and that also means that you can write really long operations if you have very complex recovery uh, solutions. Uh, if you would use a script, you would have to uh, handle that yourself. Um, also, um, from Mista, you can use familiar actions uh, like Nova Reboot and, and and stack update and, and such um, actions, uh, which are very well documented and basically follow the uh, structure of the command line interfaces. Um, and you can also find online examples if you uh, are uh, not familiar with uh, a workflow um, scheme. Uh, and also it's uh, maintained by the communi community and uh, the new uh, actions and resources are uh, continually uh, added to Mistral, which means that um, it's it's uh, always growing, and you, you always um, it's always compatible with the la latest version of OpenStack. You don't have to maintain it like you would do if you'd ha have a script. Uh, but in a bigger picture, what you can do with Mistral templates is, along with the send-in templates and maybe uh, hot templates you can deliver the whole uh, recovery solution uh, together. Um, and, and also you can separate your business logic and input parameters. That means that you can uh, have a deliverable package that you can uh, send out to mul multiple customers uh, while, while uh, the input parameters can be uh, filled in at location. Uh, as already shown in the slides, um, Mistral is capable of parallel execution, uh, which means that if you have multiple nodes to heal, uh, it can be faster. And, it, and this is out of the box. Uh, uh, one other upside is that uh, there's a graceful failure handling available in Mistral workflows, because you know uh, when one thing fails, usually another tends to follow. So in this way, you can have a chance to escalate uh, an additional failure or still have some more drastic measures to uh, heal your cluster. Uh, also, because Mistral is very capable, um, maybe your other lifecycle management uh, operations are defined in Mistral as well, so you can deliver uh, together. And also, you have the chance to cancel uh, a recovery execution if you think that an, an automatic solution is at that moment is not favorable. And, and, also, and this can happen in a way that uh, stops at a very um, reasonable stop or, or a stable state where you can even continue uh, if, you may, if you wish so. Um, Mistral also has a directory capabilities for these workflows so you can have multiple versions. Uh, which is very good if you have a very uh, heter uh, heterogeneous uh, cluster. For example, if you're doing an upgrade, and parts of the uh, um, some of the nodes have up already upgraded and re would require a newer version of recovery action, and other nodes uh, are still using the old uh, software. And also, but you might not realize that with Mistral you have built-in uh, execution history uh, because all Mistral workflows. Uh, create a new execution, and all the executions have the task, uh, list of tasks that the execution done or about to do, and this is basically very easy. Uh, it makes it easy for you to debug uh, if, if the recovery action has failed, uh, and also it, has, it can serve uh, uh, auditory purposes as well. 
uh, one slight downside is that this database is right now is ever growing, so you have to clean up uh, once in a while. And I give back uh, okay. the mic to you. So I will uh, continue to give the introduction about the VR ops. Uh, actually, this, uh, this is the example we use to show how our extension to work together with the enterprise products. Uh, VR ops actually is a very reputed product from VMware. Uh, this product can do uh, different kinds of uh, metrics collection and analysis about the health management, risk analysis, and the efficiency management. So uh, the different metrics can collect it from the you know, hypervisor and the host level, such as for the health perspective, we can know if any network parts is suffering from the, you know, the competency or contention. Uh, and for the risk analysis, maybe we, I mean the user uh, want to know if any CPU is suffering from the pricer or something like that. And for the efficiency, actually, uh, VR ops can re report if anything is suffering from the low uti uh, utilization. All these things, just uh, simple examples. But uh, for the enterprise level, actually, we can contribute uh, many different kind of monitoring and uh, concrete metrics analysis. And the uh, more powerful thing about VR ops is uh, this product provides the adapter mechanism that allow different network and the storage managers to contribute and integrate their uh, data back to the uh, OpenStack space. Here, this is a graph actually showed the you know, improved auto-healing loop uh, compared to the uh, third slide I just showed. Here you can see we implement a VROPS plugin in HIT. That means expose the resources group about the VR ops. And uh, in the Mitaka, actually, we already integrate the resources with HEAT. And we use, that means we can use HEAT template to create uh, the Sunlin cluster and uh, generate VR ops alert or monitoring you know, the mechanism. And then we can use the VR ops to monitor the OpenStack clusters created by Sunlin and uh, notify if anything happens you know, the condition trigger uh, what we want to know. We will, uh, uh, we already implement the Mistral plugin inside the Sunlin, and if anything happens, the failure detected by the VROPS, the VROPS will notify Sunlin to do the Mistral based recovery. So the, uh, the seven steps will be the, you know, improve the auto healing loop. Now in the following slide, I will give an example about what the VROPS template will be look like. Uh, here on the, uh, on the left side of the slide, you can see the symptom. Actually, that's uh, one resource def definition required by the VROPS. Here, uh, around the condition part, list the property group used to define what kind of matrix you want to use. Here, example is uh, disk space. That means if the lifted space is less than uh, five gigabytes, the, uh, the unit here is gigabytes, then the symptom will be triggered. So that's one example. On the, on the right side, we will use a symptom to create a VR ops alert. Here you can see the connection between the two resources. Here we will use a symptom to define the alert. That's means if the symptom is triggered, then I will generate the alert by VR ops. And here actually uh, are two very important resources because by the two resources, the resources we connect the OpenStack space objects with the VR ops side management. Here uh, for the notification part, it connects the uh, web hook. That means uh, what kind of thing we need to do. Actually, the uh, web hook is generated by uh, Sunlin. That's uh, Sunlin provide, as Qingming just mentioned, Sunlin actually uh, provide a receiver. That means we can generate a web hook to do some specific things with authentication. Uh, here we use a Mistral as a recover action and generate the web hook and use it here. The other side to connect by the resource is uh, what kind of alert. 
we just uh, in the slide side actually we define the router here. So uh, by the notification we connect the uh, the alert definition and the webhook together. Uh, the former the former part of the custom part, uh, custom group actually is another very important resource. Here we use custom group to identify what kind of VMs or objects should be targeted uh, uh, by the VR ops to monitor. Here we can use the uh, filters. The filter here we use uh, uh, the the name of the VM that will contain you know some uh, some given keys and to filter out what kind of targeted VMs we need to monitor. It. We have other things such as a tag or something like that. Here is an example actually about uh, how to use mutual workflow in uh, Sunny health management policy to do the recover things. And uh, we can save the, you know, all the details here, just uh, pay attention to this part about the recover action definition. Here we use a name to define the, you know, the workflow name we want to uh, call to execute. And we use a type of workflow to identify, okay, this action is a workflow actually. And we use input under the parameters to, you know, group all the uh, parameters or inputs we need to execute the workflow. Now, uh, actually, we can uh, give a demo to show the uh, the whole flow we uh, we improved for the auto healing purpose. In the demo, actually, we will use the heat template to create a sending cluster with two nodes. And we will attach a health policy with this cluster where we will point out which Mishu uh, workflow will be used as a recover uh, action. Then use the, you know, once attached the policy, Sunny will pass it and generate a receiver, use the Mishu as a recover action and then give the URL, you just saw it, it's a webhook URL, and give the URL back to the uh, VROps part of the resource to create a notification, as I just mentioned. And then we will use tag, That's, that means when, when underlying actually, when we create the uh, sending clusters, we will change Nova, actually tag every VM with the sending cluster ID. And the user ID actually via ops can filter out the targets we need uh, to monitor. So we will use uh, all these tags uh, to create the custom group. And then, you know, uh, the heat get everything and uh, create all the via ops resources and uh, close all the loop. Okay, now I would like to show the demo. Okay, here we will save the, you know, hit uh, uh, template, uh, the part. We just list the receivers already created. And uh, here you can see, uh, we already create uh, a receiver, use the mutual, uh, mutual workflow as a cluster recover action. And you can see here is a generated webhook. And then we can show the VR ops part as I just presented. Here is a same term and also use the disk space uh, as a as a same term to trigger the alert. And then we will just uh, do the test based on it.
and after the heat is a uh, is a run, and uh, you know here actually we uh, we show the different uh, uh, resources already created inside the VROPS. Actually, that's the uh, UI of the VROPS. And here you can see the notification alert and the symptom already created because we that's actually uh, uh, alert definition used to create the notification part, as I mentioned. This is a custom group we use to filter out the targets where ops need to monitor. And here actually is, a, uh, is where the alerts to show, uh, uh, actually to simulate the uh, disk exhaust condition to trigger the alert. At the same time, we use another thread to uh, DD, you know, uh, write the input into the two node to exhaust their disk. And after two cycles, actually the cycle you can set by the uh, Selenium health policy. And after two cycles, actually the uh, you know, the, the alert will be triggered. And then you can see that's a true alert generated by, uh, detected by the VR ops. And at the same time, actually, that's a UI of Horizon, of course. And the, the, the two nodes is, is a trigger to resize because, you know, the alert is, uh, is generated to, to know, okay, the left space size is less than you know, what we need. So we will resize the disk into a larger one. Here we use a target flavor is, a, is a small, M1 small. The original flavor uh, is a disk of five gigabytes. And you can see uh, underlying the, uh, you know, resize work is undergoing. After it, you can see all the node already be uh, resized to the small flavor. Uh, that's our uh, demo, actually. If you want to uh, read more about our uh, workflow things, actually, we have the code put on the GitHub, and you can read more about what we did in the resize. Actually, that's how our YAML used for the workflow side. You can see we uh, actually list all the VMs to check if the flavor uh, is right, and if we have the capacity to do the uh, resize, and then do the resize. At last, we confirm and verify all the nodes already be resize to the targeted flavor. So that's the reason why we use MISO here. It's a very uh, good project for us to collaborate. Okay, so that's what we want to show. And now we are open to questions and uh, you know, all the suggestions. Thank you.